An audio excerpt of Ruby Red by Kirsten Gier, translated from the German by Anthea Bell, published by Henry Holt Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group, read by Marisa Carlin. I got no further than the passage, and then I was swept off my feet. Convinced that my last hour had come, I squeezed my eyes shut, but I only fell on my knees with a bump, and the floor felt just like the familiar wooden floorboards. Cautiously, I opened my eyes. It was lighter now, as if the sun had risen in the last second. For a moment I hoped that nothing had happened. Then I saw that I had indeed landed in our corridor, but it looked different. The walls were painted dark olive green, and there were no ceiling lights. I heard voices coming from Nick's room, female voices. I stood up quickly. If anyone saw me now, how was I going to explain where I'd suddenly come from in my Hello Kitty pajamas? I'm so tired of getting up at the crack of dawn, one voice was saying. Walter can sleep until nine in the morning. Not us. I should have stayed on the farm milking cows. Walter's on duty half the night, Clary. Your cap's crooked, said the second voice. Tuck your hair neatly under it or Mrs Mason will be cross. She's always cross anyway, grumbled the first voice. There are much stricter housekeepers, Clary dear. Come on, or we'll be late. Mary went downstairs fifteen minutes ago. Yes, and she made her bed first. Always busy, always neat, just the way Mrs Mason likes her housemaids. Mary does it on purpose. Have you felt her blanket? It's ever so soft. That's not fair. I had to get out of here fast. But where could I go? Good thing I knew my way around the house. I've been given a horrid scratcher blanket. Clary's voice complained. You'll be glad of it in winter. Come along. The door handle was pressed down. I raced over to the built-in cupboard, flung the door open, and shut it again after me, just as the door of Nick's room opened. I don't see why I have to have a scratchy blanket and Mary gets a nice soft one, Clary's voice went on. It's so unfair. Betty can go out into the country with Lady Montrose. And we have to spend all summer in the stuffy city air. You really should try not to complain so much, Clary. I agreed with the other woman. This girl, Clary, was a real moaning Minnie. I heard the two of them go downstairs and breathed a sigh of relief. That was a close one. But now what? Should I just wait in the cupboard until I travel back again? That was probably the safest thing to do. Sighing, I crossed my arms. Behind me in the darkness, someone grunted. I froze with horror. What for heaven's sake was that? Is that you, Clary? Asked a voice from the shelf where the clean sheets were stacked. It was a male voice. Did I oversleep? Heavens above, someone actually slept in this cupboard? What a way to treat someone. Clary? Mary, who's that? Asked the voice. Its owner sounded more awake now. There were noises in the cupboard. A hand reached out and touched my back. I wasn't hanging about waiting for it to grab hold of me. I opened the cupboard door and ran for it. Stop! Stay where you are! I looked back over my shoulder. A young man in a long white shirt emerged from the cupboard to catch me. I ran downstairs. Where on earth was I going to hide now? The footsteps of the man from the cupboard came closer, and he was shouting, Stop! Thief! Thief? I couldn't believe my ears. What was I supposed to have stolen? His nightcap or something? Luckily, I could have run down these stairs in my sleep. I was already familiar with every single step. I raced down two flights of stairs at the speed of light, and then passed great-great-great-great-great-uncle Hugh's portrait, leaving it behind on my left with some regret, because the secret door behind it would have been a great way to get out of this stupid situation. But the doorknob always jammed slightly, and in the time I'd have needed to get the door open... The man in the nightshirt would have caught up with me. No, I needed a better place to hide. On the first floor, I almost collided with a housemaid carrying a big jug. She squealed as I raced past and dropped the jug. Water splashed to the floor along with broken china. I hoped my pursuer would slip and fall on it. He wouldn't get past the water and broken china too quickly, anyway. I made use of my start on him to run down the steps to the musician's gallery, open the door to the little storage space under it, and crouch inside. It was dusty and untidy in here, the same as in my own time, and full of cobwebs. 
A little light fell in through the gaps between the steps, enough for me to see that at least there wasn't anyone sleeping in this cupboard. It was crammed with old junk, just like in the 21st century. Above me I heard loud voices. The man in the nightshirt was talking to the poor housemaid who had dropped the jug. The girl must be a thief. I never saw her ear in the ass before. Other voices joined in. She ran on down. Maybe there's a whole pack of them here. Please, Mrs. Mason, I couldn't help it. The thief just ran into me. I expect they're after her ladyship's jewels. Well, I didn't meet anyone on the stairs, so she must still be here somewhere. Make sure the front door is locked and search the house, ordered an energetic female voice. As for you, Walter, go upstairs at once and put something on to cover your airy legs. Not a nice sight first thing in the morning. I could hear my heart pounding in my ears. I'd hidden in here a million times when I was little, but I'd never been so scared of being found. Cautiously, so as not to make any noise that might give me away, I squeezed further in among the junk. A spider ran over my arm, such a big one that I almost screeched with fright. Lester, Mr. Jenkins and Tot, you search the ground floor and the cellars. Mary and I will search the first floor. Clary, guard the back door, and Ellen, you watch the front door. Suppose she tries getting out through the kitchen. She'd have to get past Mrs. Crane and her iron pans first. Look in the cupboards under the stairs and behind all the curtains. I was finished. Oh, damn it. This was all just so, so surreal. Here I was, sitting in my pyjamas in a cupboard, surrounded by fat spiders, dusty furniture, and, oh my God, was that by any chance a stuffed crocodile? And waiting to be arrested for theft. And all because Sir Isaac Newton got his stupid sums wrong. I felt so angry and helpless that I started to cry. Maybe these people would feel sorry for me when they found me. The crocodile's glass eyes sparkled mockingly in the dim light. There were footsteps to be heard all over the house now. Dust from the steps was falling into my eyes. But then I felt that tugging sensation in my stomach again. I'd never been so glad of it. The crocodile blurred before my eyes. Everything spun wildly, and all was quiet again.